Hello, and welcome to the second video tutorial of Gearify. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draw gears using simple point and click. So, before I begin, I'm just going to show you a useful little tool, or little uh, options here. Towards the bottom of the design tab, there are options that let you choose what your teeth look like. Uh, there are a whole bunch of options here but one of the easiest to use is to click on the Calculate Teeth tab. Uh, and below there's the Standard tab. Uh, you can choose between round, square, and triangular. Uh, I'll stick with, let's just stick with triangular for the moment. Uh, you can also set the number of teeth down here that you want to use. 32 is generally a, a good uh, happy medium but you can change uh, how many teeth you want as well so that's a, a, another useful option so just understand that uh, the teeth don't have to look like what they uh, do in my videos they can look like just about anything you want I will be posting more tutorials about how they work in the future so with this tooth design option let's get to the draw option for gear design so, under the Design tab and the Base Curve section, click Draw. And you can see the little red line here just follows the mouse. And just start clicking in a few places on the screen. And you'll need three spokes before you create a gear. Okay. So basically, you just left-click, you add a spoke wherever you want, and you right click to remove a spoke. The spoke you remove will be the highlighted spoke. You see as I move the mouse around, it's basically highlighting the spoke that is closest to the mouse. So whenever you right click, it'll just remove, or, it'll just remove whichever one is highlighted, like so. So that's easy. Yeah, you can just click around and create whatever gear shape you like. And when you're done, you can click Calculate, Create Gear. And we've generated a pretty wild gear shape there. So I'm going to go back to the Design tab again, and we're back to Drawing. So to start up with a new design, I'm going to click the Clear button. It's going to ask me if I'm sure, say yes, start all over. What you have here, you have various symmetry options which are very helpful for creating uh, less, like more uniform looking gears. So I'll start with horizontal symmetry. Just click the little checkbox there. So you see a vertical line through the center of the display area. What this means is that anything, any spoke you add, will be added at the exact same spot on the opposite side. Likewise, anything you delete on the left side will be deleted on the right side. So you can see with a very sh short, you know, number, very small number of clicks, you can get a nice, uniform, clean looking gear design uh, in, in no time at all, really. So that is, um, I think, of a very uh, useful option. Uh, likewise, although it's not much different, you can have vertical symmetry. Same thing, it just it reflects it from top to bottom, so whatever you see on the top is reflected on the bottom. You know, whatever you remove at the top is removed at the bottom, and so on. Uh, I'll clear this again. And you can use both options at once if you want. So this will create sort of double symmetry, left to right and top to bottom. So very quickly you can create some, some nice, looking, nice looking designs with this. Let's go to calculate gear on that, create gear, see what that one looks like. Oh, that's nice. 
increase the speed, add some textures. Those are pretty cool. So, all right. The third symmetry option is radial. Let me clear this one. With the radial symmetry, now you see that these uh, three radial lines are drawn. Uh, and as you click, basically you have a series of sectors, and in each sector the same pattern is repeated. So this is useful for a number of reasons. First of all, you can set how many sectors you have. So it could be five, for example. Usually you don't want the number of sectors to be too high or it gets crazy. Uh, this is useful because this relates to gear symmetry. Uh, gear symmetry is somewhat involved, and I'll probably post a tutorial, an individual tutorial explaining it. But in short, uh, this has an effect on what's called the rotation ratio, which is a portion of the calculate gear screen. I haven't showed you so far in any of the tutorials, but you can adjust the rotation ratio before you calculate, and this has an effect on the type of gears that you create. So, for example, I'm going to use a 1 to 5 rotation ratio here. Basically, here you see that the, uh, let me slow this down a bit, the calculated gear basically will rotate uh, five times for every one rotation of the other gear. Make it solid. So, see rotation ratio is one to five. So, conjugate gear, which is the calculated gear, rotates five times for every full rotation of the original gear. So this is a 1 to 5 ratio. You could have, say, a 3 to 5 ratio if you want. And we got uh, another gear design from this, and you see that this is, uh, this one will basically, it be, you can basically think of it as terms of the number of, uh, almost like the number of petals, like you can think of this as being kind of a flower, and this one has five petals and the other one has three. What that also means is that this one will rotate, the known gear will rotate three times for every five rotations of the calculated gear. So what does this have to do with symmetry? Symmetry basically means, again, thinking of it as being like a flower, the number of petals on the gear. And this determines what sort of rotation ratios you have, you can have. So here we have uh, five as the fixed number in the rotation ratio. And the other option is free for you to choose. Again, it's a complicated topic, and I'm going to post a video on that exclusively. But in short, it changes the size and the number of revolutions uh, of one gear relative to the next. Um, also useful is that you can use the internal option uh, for calculating gears. And this is something that you could use uh, anywhere at any time calculating a gear. And this produces gears. Let me make a, a slightly better looking gear. This one's a bit sloppy. It's too, too rough. I'll use uh, three, radial symmetry of three. That's a bit nicer. So, now I'm going to create an internal gear. So you just check that option here. And we've created a gear that's on the inside instead of on the outside. Now, th this new gear is kind of too close to the size of the original gear. So I'm going to change the rotation ratio, make it even bigger. I'm going to make it like twice the symmetry value on the known gear. So I'm going to make it 6 to 3. Calculate that. There we go. That's looking a lot better. All right. This one's solid as well. There we go. So, yeah, internal gears are cool. You can do a lot with them. So, back to uh, the drawing. Basically, I've shown you everything you need to do for drawing. Uh, 
you have the pan zoom option that you can check and this way it disables the normal controls for drawing and you can zoom in and out and use your typical you can drag to pan press Z to zoom extents so this is restores your normal zoom controls if maybe you want to take a closer look at something you're drawing maybe you want to carefully uh, take you know look closely when you're when you're making your adding your spokes um, but the final option that we have here is so I showed you in the first tutorial that you can use images to generate gear shapes but the images require that you have a nice solid background that's distinctly different from the content of your image so what if you don't have that well I'll show you what you can do so we're gonna upload uh, what's called a stencil image so right here under the stencil box you see a button that says image so click that and I'm gonna use a photograph because generally photographs are hard to read so it's taking a sec to upload this image probably high resolution hey it's crumpy cat so I'm gonna uncheck the radial symmetry there so first thing I need to do is I need to set where the center of the gear is going to be so by default the center of the gear is right at the center of the image and you can see the spoke line extending from the center right here now I don't really want the center of the gear to be right there I want it to be maybe like closer to where his nose is so for that I need to adjust the pixel coordinates of the gear center so this is at 1400 so let's reduce that a little bit let's make it 1200 thousand we're getting there 900 it's hmm, close 850 70 okay that looks good all right now we need to inc increase just a little bit lower to get to where his nose is so let's make this uh, 1100 nope 1200 there we go right where we need to be all right and now we're gonna make a gear out of grumpy cat's face so all I'm gonna do is start whoops I have the pan zoom option still clicked in fact Let's make use of that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So, all right, too close. It's a little too close. There we go. So, uncheck pan zoom. All right. Now I'm just going to start clicking around the edge of Grumpy Cat's face, his angry little face. Just trace along the edge. And pretty soon I'll have a gear shape worked out. Obviously, more time consuming than automatically reading the image, which is why I have that feature. But you also have this option of doing it manually. I think I did a crappy job of following the edge the first pass I can't really see it's a bit blurred that'll work all right so similar to what I have with uh, the image upload there is an offset option I'm gonna say an offset of negative two for example and what this does is it moves the traced outline that you created closer to the inside of the image so that when you view it you don't see the gear teeth sticking out outside the image now what I'm noticing here is that these teeth are just they look like they're too big for this uh, for this shape they're just sticking out at odd angles and everything so let's get a, a better a better looking uh, tooth outline so what I'm going to do is down here under calculate teeth I'm going to increase it, increase the number of teeth 
a little more up to 64. Now I'm going to click Add Teeth. So two things just happened. First, it uh, recalculated the teeth with 64 in place. And that looks a bit better. Uh, it's got some sharp corners, which tends to cause trouble with teeth, but it'll work. Uh, also, the view was automatically reset when I recalculated the teeth, so I'd have to click pan zoom to get back to my view that I had. So, all right, but we basically got, you know, a, a grumpy cat gear shape. So all we need to do now is click on calculate gear, click the create gear button, and oh snap, I still got internal checked. Don't really want that. Let's uncheck that. Just go to a simple one-to-one -one external gear. Calculate it again. Whoa! -ho! Okay, we've got our grumpy cat gear. This will be funny. There we go. Hey, grumpy cat. I never liked cats. So. That's kind of cool, actually. It looks like it's some sort of, uh, I don't know, like a flask or a potion or something. But anyway, there you go. You know, th this could be your cat. Uh, it could be your face or whatever you want to make a gear of. Um, there's a little bit of messiness right around this portion of the gear calculation, and... and uh, you can clean this up by experimenting with your options, experimenting with the number of teeth, for example. Um, that'll improve things. It's, it's heavily, uh, the software is an experimental uh, tool. So certain designs work well, certain ones don't, and uh, it involves a lot of tweaking and experimenting to get things to look the way you want. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope you will be uh, drawing your own gear shapes soon. Um, so thanks for watching.